we return now that my microphone is actually plugged in and actually set to record from unlike yeah I totally just accidentally recorded 40 minutes of uh, sound straight from my speakers so at least it's there's sound straight from my speakers so you that, that'll be the one video where uh, you get to hear just pure game sound which is okay so all you missed was me uh, awkwardly uh, screaming at uh, Okabe for peeping on the girls and the gratuitous uh, shots of them in the shower and uh... anyway now we're down to business now we had the uh, 18 18 montage with that said, I head down to handle things with Mr. Braun. <laughs> we'll do our best not to die. We're immortal like a phoenix! As I pass through the lounge, Mayuri looks up from her costume to see me off. Dramatic music as we march out to go take on Mr. Braun. Oh no. When I step into the do store, Mr. Braun, Suzuha, and the chipmunk are watching some comedy show on a massive 42 inch CRT. <laughs> Watching TV at noon without a customer in sight looks like business as usual at the Brawn Tube Workshop. I raise my hand in response to Suzuha's greeting. The chipmunk, Nai, quickly hides behind her father when she sees me. What if the CRT is the lifter? <clears throat> Just a thought. I look around the store, it's an answer. Huh, I just thought of something. Did you just think of the same thing? Like CERN, like CERN's Large Hadron Collider, the phone wave named subject to change must have some kind of electron, electron feed to keep the black hole open. CERN calls this feed the lifter. We still haven't figured out what that is. Nor could be acting as a substitute lifter in our time machine. What if... What if our lifter is somewhere in this shop? Whatever it is, must be in close proximity to the phone wave name subject to change. It wouldn't, couldn't work otherwise, and the Braun Tube Workshop is located directly below the lab. Could our lifter be a CRT? Oh, what? what, what? <laughs> My life has no meaning. It's all gone now. No one will look at me. Not anymore. What can I do? Even if I shout, no one can hear. My voice can't reach the one who's most important to me. I walk alone through dusty gray streets, forever pounded by lukewarm rain. Such is the fate of the defeated. Still, Ferris is here. Someone fl Are you okay, Ferris? <laughs> Are you, are you... Seriously, uh, real talk, are you okay? That's concerning. Uh, th what chuny nonsense. If you want attention, come to the lab. Mayuri and I are here for you. I, I feel like that was somewhat serious. We are here for you, though, friend. But I'm... I feel like that was more serious than uh, Okabe was taking it as. Wow. True. <laughs> Marketing. Mayuri, buy a CRT. Check out this scary looking guy trying desperately to explain himself to his daughter. Hilarious. Yes, it is. It's adorable. <laughs> oh. Suza has the same age as Daru and I. It makes her older than Mayuri or Kurisu.
Oh. Kick you with the little bronze, Papa. And he joins Pinkies with his daughter. Oh, damn, Mr. Braun, you're way off character. How does a guy like him produce a daughter like that? Nai is one of the kindest, gentlest girls I've ever met. I don't know why she's so afraid of me, though. She's afraid of your chaos! Anyway, I came here to explain when the building's about to shake. How do I avoid having my head ripped off? How many more earthquakes do you think this building can handle? No, that's way too obvious. An earthquake is coming, and my magic eye, reading Steiner, has seen it in the future. Escape it while you still can. Yeah, that might work. Mm. Eh? Suzuha's hostility towards Kurisu hasn't abated. <laughs> sure. Why do you think he can boss me around? Because he owns your building. And you pay him rent. As payment for this, I uh, humbly request permission to make the building shake. Suzo looks at me with a smile that shines through the gloom that fills the room, fills the store. That's the first time anyone said that to me. It makes me kind of happy. <laughs> oh no. Chipmunk cowers in terror as I unveil my madness. I can see tears pooling in her eyes. I guess my aura is just too powerful for a grade school girl to endure. I guess so. <laughs> Susa takes my arm and leads me away from the ten Nojis who have gone back to watching TV. Uh? Tell me why, and I will listen to you. Circumspect. Why can't you just say careful like a normal person? Not that I'm one to talk. Me? Normal? Suzuha shakes her head firmly. She looks serious. Perniciousness? Is she saying Kurisu is dangerous? There's something strange about the way Suzuha is talking, and it's not just her fondness for uncommon words. Something else, something... Hmm. Is she a mole from CERN? Suzuha's eyes are hard, and her voice is as cold as ice. I can tell that she means every word she says. <laughs> really? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> really? No, that's impossible. CERN is our enemy. If Daru's hacking is discovered, I have no doubt they will do everything in their power to destroy us. How can Kurisu be connected to CERN? <clears throat> Suzuha nods firmly. <clears throat> oh, again, Suzuha's words sound strange to my ears. 
but I still can't place a finger on why. Because she's talking about inventing the time machine in past tense? The credit for inventing the time machine was hers? I don't believe it. I saw Kurisu's anger when she learned what CERN had been doing. She called their actions betrayal of scientists everywhere. How could someone with such a pure love of science be connected to CERN? She's connected in the future. What if, but if what Suza says is true... <laughs> could she be the one who sent that threatening email? I suspected Moika, but... Oh! Oh, shit. Suddenly, the ground starts to shake. They didn't wait for my permission. Chris, who started the experiment? They haven't talked to Mr. Braun yet. Sure enough, veins on Mr. Braun's forehead swell in response to the shaking. I swear I have nothing to do with this! Shaking gets more intense, knocking over a CR. Oh shit! <laughs> Crap, I can't talk my way out of this one. Mr. Braun clearly wants to snap my neck like a twig. But he elects to protect his greatest treasure, the 42 inch CRT, instead. He grabs the remote and switches it off, then grabs hold of the TV and hangs on for dear life. I need to go yell at my lab mems. Wait, it's over? I carefully step through the rubble and take the remote from the day's Mr. Braun's hand. Was the 42-inch CRT the... I press the red power button. The 42-inch CRT instantly comes to life. I stare at the image on the screen and smile. <laughs> Enough with the chaos, not around the kids. So, Okabe, your rent's going up. Stars explode behind my eyes as Mr. Braun drives his fist into the top of my head. The world spins. I struggle to get a hold of my shaken brain. so hard? Yes. Maybe I should report him for assault. No. Thanks to his brutality, I had to make a strategic retreat. Fortunately, I did not emerge empty-handed. The extra 10,000 yen a month will hurt, but in exchange, I have acquired information essential to the success of my plan. <laughs> Yuri and Kurisu appear in the second story window. Christina, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I run up the stairs. Of course you'd say that. When I tell Kurisu about the 42-inch CRT downstairs, that is her first reaction. Naturally. No, you sounded pretty much, pretty exclusively like you were blaming me. Just saying, Christina. <laughs> yeah. As soon as Mr. Braun turned it off. Wait till Mr. Braun finds out what we're actually doing. That's my responsible, Mayushi. Nobody replies to Mayushi's off-point statement. We're busy reading about cathode ray tubes on the internet. It doesn't take long before you find something interesting. Cathode ray uh, uh, <clears throat> A cathode ray ray raid tube? A cathode ray tube is a component called an electron gun. It uses extreme heat and a strong electric field to accelerate electrons and turn them into a beam. A beam. The electron beam stri striking the TV screen's phosphor layer is what generates the picture. An electron gun could certainly work as a lifter. YouTube workshop doesn't have especially strict business hours, but it's usually open around, from around 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. It matches up perfectly with my observation that the phone wave, name subject to change, only works between noon and 6 p.m. Few instances it hasn't worked during that time frame can be explained by the TV being off. too strong or too weak. By free coincidence, the 42 inches inch CRT's electron gun appears to have exactly the right level of electron discharge. That's the only explanation. The will of Steins Gate! The choice of Steins Gate, probably. Pardon me. Rather than glare at me, as she has so many times in the past, Kurisu shoots me an exasperated smile. <laughs> She's honestly happy. <laughs> Mayuri looks up from her costume with a question, question in her eyes. <laughs> Super phone wave, Chan. <laughs> I'm not going back down there. My head still hurts from last time. Next time I doubt I'll make it out alive. 
Kurisu orders me with a sour look. It's like I'm the assistant here. You are. Well... <laughs> ah. suddenly turns serious, but I can see the hunger in her eyes and the flush of excitement on her cheeks. She knows that we stand on the threshold of a new age in science, and she cannot resist the lure of the unknown. She's a true scientist, no doubt about it. Our dream. I've never really thought about it that way. But she's right. My hands are shaking. Not from fear of Mr. Braun, but from excitement. <laughs> what? Kurisu interrupts my speech. Oh, fair enough. She spears me with her gaze. Spear! I meet it head on. After a few moments, I feel my mouth curve into a smile. With that, I head downstairs. A cracked skull and an empty wallet are a small price to pay for science. Kurisu and Daru send me off with applause for some reason. Mayuri is the only one who looks worried, but I pat her head in reassurance. When I get downstairs, Suzuha and the chipmunk are sitting side by side on the bench outside. Yo. Oh, I'm sorry, Nai. Nai gives me a quick bow, then hides behind Suzuha. <laughs> Damn, now I really don't want to go in there. Can't you curtail Kyoma in front of the kid? I see. It's true, festivals are very crowded. I was hoping I might run into you at one, but I guess the chances of that were pretty slim to begin with. Ah, oh, it's not like I go to every festival. Please don't misunderstand. P.S. I only did five practice songs with Samidari. Oh, Luca. You're doing well. <clears throat> Thank you for your pity. Suzuha clasps her hands in solemn prayer. <laughs> uh, I'm not dead. Just my brain cells. Daddy was angry. It's okay. Please don't be sad. Can't believe she's Mr. Braun's daughter. She's so good. She's so good. I'm still raising your rent, Okabe! Nice smile slightly at my words of comfort. Hmm. As his eyes start to shine. <laughs> oh god. No, but she flexes her bicep for some reason. I'll, I'll seduce him with my, uh, well-toned muscles. Oh, <laughs> okay. She insists, so I poke it. It's just as hard as her confidence suggests. Well, she's probably stronger than me. Yeah? But I don't understand what flexing has to do with seduction. Oh, 
ひろおき I want to complain that he's the one being mean. But I just said we were even, so I refrain. The chipmunk nods. What a good chipmunk. When we enter the store, we find Mr. Braun cleaning up the pieces of the broken CRT. When our eyes meet, another vein pops on his forehead. <laughs> What? My... A gift. And I... F I she flexes. Some of this. And she flexes her other arm. And a little bit of this. <laughs> what? With a vigorous shout, which in no way seems appropriate for seduction, Suzuha whips off her jacket and... Uh, what? What the fuck? <laughs> what? What the fuck? I can see your bra. No, wait, that's not a bit the tight tank top that leaves your midriff bare. Okay. Yeah, Susan has no sign of embarrassment as she rushes. What the fuck is going on? She slips behind him, grabs her coat, and pulls it. What the fuck? What? What? There goes your job! Now wait just a second. Is this your idea of seduction? It looks like you're trying to suffocate him! Good luck keeping your job after this! Mr. Braun flails his arms, trying to escape Susan's restraint. There's a huge difference in strength between the two. It's only a matter of time before you shake Susan off. What the fuck? What the fuck? I'm so... Realizing that the only choice is to go for it, I dash for the counter, grab the remote, and switch on the 42 inch CRT. After about two seconds, an image appears on the giant screen. At the same time, the ceiling starts shaking! Kurisu activated the phone wave, name subject to change with perfect timing. Are we changing the past? Please tell me we're changing the past. Where did she really take off her clothes without knowing why? <laughs> Until I get out, so he doesn't literally tear me to shreds. During that time, I escape from the store. Outside, Nye's following earthquake drill procedure, crouching while protecting her head. Good girl. I ignore that and look up to the second floor. At exactly the same time, Kurisu appears in the window and gives me a happy thumbs up. A second later, she blushes, shoots me a glare, and dis disappears inside as if nothing happened. What's with her attitude? I'm risking my life here. In any case, the experiment was a success. The 42-inch CRT was the key, as I suspected. Now how do I explain this to Mr. Braun? Good fucking luck! I don't want him to kick us out of the building. Well, that was interesting. Good, uh, Perhaps I shouldn't have left it to Suzuha. I timidly peek into the store to gauge the situation. Suzuha is there, fidgeting in her tank top as Mr. Braun glares down at her. <laughs> I don't remember to thank him. In, in that precise order, I'll kill him first and then thank him. <laughs> that and naturally, I was talking like an idiot without uh, even. Uh, Okay, well then. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. This is, uh. Very, uh. Oh, sorry. This is a handy feature. First time I've actually used the backlog like this. Where me and my infinite idiosity just, uh, fucking, uh, 
starting to play the game and starting to talk without even realizing I didn't even start recording. No problems here. Susa's seduction strategy worked, I guess. Mr. Braun, what a guy. A little while later, I'm lying on the sofa watching high school baseball. Kumamoto and Aichi are locked in a fierce struggle for the playoffs. Just then, the clack clack of the sewing machine in the lounge suddenly stops. She motions to me while holding the costume. What does she want? I walk over to her. Spread it out like flop. Don't. Don't. Ah! Daru, no! I follow Mayuri's directions and spread the costume out by the sleeves, like flop! She inspects it from a few paces away. It's hard to believe, given her usual ditziness, but Mayuri is very serious about her art. That's why cosplayers value her costumes highly. The costume I'm holding now is custom made for Lukako. I thought Lukako was against it, but I guess Mayuri, Mayuri managed to persuade her. Yay! <laughs> okay. Mayuri looks tired. She's been working all night. She is a hard worker. That doesn't dim the brightness of her satisfied smile. Christina trying to finish the... the superphone wave? Damn you, assistant! She treats me and Daru like garbage, but Mayuri gets the sisterly touch. Oh! Kurisu connects the two cords she's holding. It's alive! It's alive! Celebration is in order. But nobody cheers. It's a tie. Honestly, I don't feel like cheering either. That's not because I'm tired. We worked around the clock for three straight days to finish the time leap machine. Now that it's complete, I realize that part of me never truly believed it would happen. I feel my enthusiasm cooling rapidly, the fire quenched by my one stark question. What do we do with it? I look at Kurisu. She too seems less than enthused. I look at the improved phone wave, name subject to change again. The biggest change is the headgear attachment to the X68000. Looks like something out of a low budget cyberpunk movie. Fortunately, we don't need nerve jacks or brain chips for it to work. You just put it on and let the sensors do the rest. Phone wave chan. No consensus. Are we surprised though? That's not a creep.
to being a channeler. Kreezu meets, meets my grin with an icy glare. If you tell, I will murder you in your sleep. Whatever the lab is divided on a name, the right to decide belongs to Mayuri. Oh! Oh no! You side with my assistant? an unwritten rule not to complain once Mayuri's made a, a, a decision. Her decision is final. I know the basics, but I want to hear details. Kurisu nods and stands in front of the whiteboard. She explained the basics. Now she'll ex next she'll explain the modifications she made to turn the phone wave name subject to change into a time leap machine. <laughs> Complete with emoticon subtitles. Three histological sex. Okay. data. It's less than I- 3.24 terabytes. It's less than I expected. I'm talking about the entirety of a person's memories. So we're sending the data through a phone call. Automatic decoding. building is a direct line to CERN for some reason, so we can transfer data at insanely high speeds. Three terabytes is about three trillion bytes, compressing that into just 36 bytes. 
That's one hell of a squeeze. Makes sense. She negates the side of her head. Kunisu dissolves into a blushing, stammering mess. Looks like it's up to me to answer Daru's question. Not with boobs, obviously.
<laughs> this isn't like the time leaping you see in sci-fi novels. We're yet capable of transferring personality and consciousness. Yes. who ends our explanation and takes a short breath. The lab falls into silence. I exchange glances with Kurisu and Daru. I look at Mayuri, but her expression is blank. I guess it was too complicated for her. So, I cleared my throat. It's time for the million dollar question. 